Hey, are you aware that you actually have an inner roadmap to success? So manifesting the money you desire is easy, but you've got to be tapped into your mystical spiritual self to access that roadmap. Let me guess, you find it hard to do. Well, truth be told, it's not just you. It's a hidden barrier inside of you, and there's a lot of half-truths being taught out there, which is leading people down the wrong path. Without access to this inner guidance system, you may be a bit lost, and you might even be beating yourself up. I get it. I've been so hard on myself in the past, and this is what drove me to my mission to guide you into accessing your own GPS. I want to help you make the money you deserve, but I also understand that this is not for everyone. So, I have opened limited spaces in my calendar to work with serious, conscious, spiritual, or mystical entrepreneurs who are ready to do what it takes to reach their dreams and fulfill their destiny. Are you one of them? And are you ready? Because I can help you bridge your purpose with your destiny while you start making the money you know you were destined to make and start creating the legacy and the impact you were designed to have in this world. In this discovery call with me, you will get clarity on what is preventing you from creating six-figure sales, uncover some hidden blocks holding you back, and identify a few key steps to help you move forward. If you are ready to end the struggle, and you know you have to invest in your business in order to succeed, then let's talk. Click on the button, fill out the application, and book your time with me before all of my spaces are filled up. I look forward to talking to you. Go to chatwithlucy.com. Welcome to the Wealthy Wednesday Show. I am your host, Lucy McMonagle. Women are recreating the rules for business, leadership, money, and they are changing the world in the process. Each week, join me for empowering messages and interviews that will inspire, motivate, and transform you. Giving a special shout out to Gordon Weary for creating the custom music that you are listening to now. Now, let's get started. Welcome to the Wealthy Wednesday Show. This is your host, Lucy McMonagle. I am the Mystic Wealth Creator, and I mentor mystic entrepreneurs to create more freedom in their business through conscious wealth creation so that they can make a big impact in the world and so that they can leave a legacy. Because I truly believe that when we accept our mystic powers as entrepreneurs, we're going to be able to help end poverty and end slavery in this world, especially debt slavery. Today I have an incredible, outstanding guest, and I'm so honored that I have Wendy Keller, who helps people identify, develop, and profit from their best content ideas. Ooh, ladies, if you are listening, grab a pen and grab a paper because <laughs> Wendy is going to give you some phenomenal tips today that's going to help skyrocket your business to move forward or maybe help you move just a little bit better because she also is an expert at helping individuals increase their speaking fees by up to sometimes 2,000%. So if you're doing a public speaking, if you want to get more leads and stuff, definitely listen to the show because Wendy is your lady. So Wendy, I want to welcome you to the Wealthy Wednesday show. I am so grateful. Oh, thank you for having me and welcome to all of your guests. It's just such a privilege to be able to present. Thank you. Thank you so much. Or yes. your clients are a 17 yeah. New York best. <laughs> You've got yes, 17 New York Times bestselling authors so far in my life as a literary agent yes. and nine international bestsellers and thousands and thousands and thousands of books sold, authors trained, people helped to, to become paid speakers, all that kind of stuff. It's what I do. Yes. You are so perfect at saying that because that's what you do. And, <laughs> and it's not my first time. <laughs> yes. No, it is not your first time. <laughs> and, 
Right. So I am going to ask you a couple of questions. Sure. You know, as the entrepreneurs are listening, they do want to bring their world into other people's worlds. They want to yes books. They want to do the speaking. And can you tell us what is the most important character trait that you think female entrepreneurs needs in order to succeed in this world? Oh, what a great question. Wow. I love that. That's brilliant, Lucy. Um, the first question I ask if someone comes to me for representation as a speaker or an author is, why do you want this? And I think as women, we sometimes become, in, sometimes become ensnarled in this concept of oh, is it okay to want this? Or is it okay? Is, does it mean I'm not being a good mom or I'm not being a good wife or girlfriend? Or does it, oh, what if people look at me? And, you know, women still in our society seem to yank each other down more than we lift each other up. It's left over from middle school, right? So, mm -hmm. so I think the first question is to ask ourselves why we want it and also so that we can claim that, you know, create a vision board or whatever your thing is, but also to say, do I believe I deserve this? I think that women particularly need to ask themselves that question. And if you deserve it and it's something you want, then it's within your power to have it. We all know that. Basic yes. metaphysics 101. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. You mentioned a little bit that women kind of have a tendency to tear down other women more so than not sometimes. And that's a little bit of minuscule. Is there something that an individual who's starting to burst through, who's going through that tall poppy seed syndrome, as, as we yeah. call it in some countries, yeah. to how do we handle that hurtfulness so that we can still succeed and not let that crush us? Oh, what a great question again. Wow. Um, I think that the most important thing is to find two groups of people in your life. Number one, People who are just so happy for you. We've all got a couple of friends who are happy. You tell them you're getting a divorce. They're like, congratulations. This is awesome. You tell them you broke up. Okay, this is great. You tell me you're getting married. Oh, congrats. They don't care. They just want you to be happy. So it's really important for your inner circle, your inner circle, the people you deal with multiple times a week to be those people. I have a friend in Phoenix who's been in my life since I was 17, I could call and tell her, guess what? I just went on a murder spree. And she'd be like, congratulations, that's great. She doesn't really care. So that's wonderful to have in a friend. And then also, you know, one of the things, I, I have a Buddhist practice, and one of the things I learn is to listen to the negative feedback that I hear from the outer world and evaluate, is it true? if it has any validity or has any level of constructive criticism in it. And if it doesn't, to just release it in the next meditation or visualization and say to myself, this isn't part of my path. This is who I am. And the more we get to know ourselves, the more we're released to trust that the positive will be attracted and to ask and expect the positive to be attracted. And I think that's really an important part of our journey as we move toward achieving what it is we set ourselves out to do. Exactly, Wendy. That is definitely a writer downer to accept <laughs> and to add. Or a writer upper. <laughs> or a writer upper, absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, okay. and that's so important because a lot of women entrepreneurs who are moving forward, we forget to ask for what we really want. That's so true. Yeah. So true. And by being able to say in your intentions, at the beginning of the day, when you set your intentions in whatever method you do that journaling or meditation or whatever, to be able to say, you know, attract to me the right people, the positive people who will help me to further my mission. One of the reasons I love what I do is that, you know, I'm the author of 31 published books myself. That's great. Woo. -hoo. And a few of them are under my name because I actually care about the content. The rest I write pseudonymously. However, the great thing is that because of working with my agency, Keller Media, people have been able to come to me and share their message with thousands or tens of thousands or even millions in some cases of people that they can reach. So I become the conduit for them to share their message. And I think whether you're providing housekeeping services in your region and you're doing a great job and you're helping people have healthier, better lives or you're using green cleaning products or whatever your thing is, or you envision yourself writing books and giving speeches so that you can share your message with a greater audience, 
anything that you're doing in those in those pathways is serving the world in the place that you've been in. There's this great quote that's in the Cooper Hewitt Museum, which of course is the former home of the leading thinker, Andrew Carnegie, one of the most important philanthropists of the 19th century. And it is the highest truth. And I change this to the feminine, but the, the statement that he has in his library, which is now the bookstore is the highest truth a woman sees. She must fearlessly proclaim and the important part in the highest truth a woman sees, she must fearlessly proclaim, is the fearless part. And you got to put your big girl panties on to be fearless every day in this business culture, in this country and around the world. How does one start building that fearlessness, that, that fierceness within her? I think there are two things, at least that have worked for me and that I've seen work in other women who have risen above the internal governor, I mean, in between our own self-perception that was probably not that strong growing up. Hopefully future generations of women won't have to work through that. But as we record this, of course, you know, we're thinking about the Me Too campaign and all the things that have been going on. And, you know, what woman on the planet doesn't know that that's existing, right? Hopefully two, three, four generations from now, that'll be a history book fact. Right. I really hope that's true. So yeah. how do you become fearless? Number one is to notice when you're not being fearless and to write down your accomplishments physically on a sheet of paper and get it out when you're feeling afraid, whether in yourself or from something you perceive as coming from outside you and read that aloud, read it in front of the mirror. Like Brian Tracy says, every, every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. He didn't even coin that right? Try to find ways and people and experiences that give you benefit. And don't just brush it off as like, yeah, that's the least I should do. Savor it because that builds your inner strength toward fearlessness. Absolutely. And that is so incredibly powerful to really write it down, write it down. put it on ink and paper, make it solid. These are your accomplishments. These are things that you've done, not because that was the only way you could do it, but because you really did it. You took yeah. the steps, you took the action. And there's so many women that are not ready to start a business or they're just, they're terrified. They're so fearful sure. of what do I do next? How do I find the right publisher? How do I find the right people? And sure. you, you very clearly specified, you know, Every morning, your intentions, put it out there, bring the right people, bring the right resources so that I will know. Is there any other tips that you have or any other routines that you do that have made you as successful as you truly are? Oh, thank you. One of the things, um, practical things that anyone can apply, I think I read this in the book, The One Thing. Um, there are two books called The One Thing. This is the one about the business one thing. The other one is more metaphysical, um, mm -hmm. which is also a good read. But in the book, The One Thing, I believe that's where I got introduced to the concept of having a done list. As in, what did I accomplish today? Because as women, we're kind of socialized particularly to go, there's still 50 things to do and I'm tired and it's 6 p.m. and I got to make dinner and help with the homework and you know all those things I was a single parent from the time my daughter was two and you know for the rest of her life and um, one of the things about the done list is it gives you a moment at the end of your day before you leave work to just jot down the four or five six things that you got done and, or right before you go to bed write down the things that you got done and then look at that and go you know what I got these things done it may not have been everything on my 400 point to do list but I think get these things done and if those done things start to turn out while you're tracking them to be the most important things your business and your life will start to turn around and that's all we can expect from ourselves make this day be the best it can be given all the distractions and responsibilities and conflicting things and procrastination and hormones or whatever the heck else is happening in a woman's life i think that's really important and of course you can hear in the background of what i'm saying if you're paying attention that i'm always learning i'm always reading a new book or 10 <laughs> i'm mm -hmm. always going to classes i'm always juicing myself up especially because the environment doesn't always provide enough motivation. I'm listening to podcasts like yours. It's such a great program. I'm listening to other podcasts. I'm doing what it takes to pump myself up on a daily basis so that I can achieve at the level at which I aspire to. Nobody's at the highest level they can get to 
We're all aspiring, no matter, you know, when we look at another woman and go, wow, I wish I could be like her. You know what? You can, but it's going to take a little effort between that visualization and today. And part of that effort is keeping your brain, your heart, your soul fueled with positive energy so that you can achieve the things you most desire. Wow. Perfectly said. And so powerful is the aspiring. We're always aspiring. Even if you just wrote down your done list for at the end of the day and and you start focusing on what am I doing every day? Is it working? If it's not working, what can I do? Just what, what little tweak can I do today? So I have a done list that will be more successful and then look at how can I aspire? Totally. I had a lady come to me, you know, in in selling someone's book, they need to have what's called a platform. My last book is called The Ultimate Guide to Platform Building because it's so important. And it Mm -hmm. helps people if they're planning to become an author or a speaker so they can build their business or so they can become a consultant or get higher speaking fees, whatever. I'm not really harping on the book particularly, but what I'm saying is because of that book, a woman came to me and she said, oh, Wendy, I took one of your free webinars three years ago and I applied exactly what you said and I started blogging. And I said, great. So which of your blogs got the greatest response? You know, and I'm thinking hundreds, thousands. And she said to me, one of them got nine people. And I was shocked this woman's statement. And I said, wait, you've been blogging for three years since me heard, you heard me tell you that that's one way that you particularly with your subject matter should build your platform so a publisher or a meeting planner is interested in you and you got nine to one of them? And she said, yeah. And I said, well, well, that's not really working, is it? I mean, at what point do you stop? You've taken massive action, like Tony Robbins says, but you have to see if it's working. There's intelligence. It's not all just, I'm going to create a vision board and, gee, I'm going to get a pony with stripes. I mean, it doesn't really work like that. The point of the vision board is to pull you like a tractor beam toward taking right actions in the right order so that you end up with the result that you're looking for. It's not that you just sit back like, genie, you know, and wait for this to happen, right? That lady needs to be adapting. Well, they don't like the way I'm pitching this content. People come to me all the time and say, oh, I'm a speaker and I don't know why I'm not getting more money. And I'm like, because you're speaking on a topic that never will get you over $500,000. If that's you and you're listening to this, I'm not trying to shame you. It's because your topic isn't appropriate for the corporate market. 85% of all paid speaking is in corporate. Some of the next tier down is, you know, universities or industries or something like that, associations. But the point is, if you don't have a message that fits the corporate market and you want to get up there and talk about how your daddy was mean to you when you were nine, you're not going to sell. I mean, be realistic, be practical and have your dreams and aspire to more. But you got to adapt. If you are not adapting, you are not succeeding and you're not going to succeed. That's like the lady who says, I'm going to knit baby booties and sell them at the craft fair and figures out she's working for less per hour than if she'd gone off and worked at, you know, McDonald's. You have to be realistic and Mm -hmm. business-like in your approach. Does this work? Is it working? Give yourself three to six months. And if a strategy, a marketing strategy, a book, a speech, a product isn't selling, freaking change it. Be intelligent. Take new action. That's so critical to success. Wow. That right there is completely the formula. Yeah. That is what you are absolutely brilliant. And I would love to have you give us more formulas, more systems, more, more tips, but we're almost wrapping up. Okay. So can we talk about how do people get a hold of you and how can they get a hold of some of your free webinars or your information? Sure. Well, the main clearinghouse is kellermedia.com, Keller Media, my last name, media.com. If you want to look at webinars, kellermedia.com slash webinars. If you want to spend an hour with me to figure out how I can help you and strategize what you're doing right now and make it bigger, whether it's your growing your business, growing your speaking, writing a book, marketing a book you've already got, then I suggest you start with kellermedia.com slash rent. And if you'd like to share your book idea with my agency, kellermedia.com submission dash guidelines will tell you what we're looking for. And the reason we are so specific on what we're looking for is because agents are the mouthpiece of the publishing industry. What we're looking for is whatever they're looking for because we only get paid when we sell something to them. Those are the three best ways, depending on what your audience most desires from my team and I. Wow. 
Wendy, this has been phenomenal. So definitely, ladies, decide which one you want to go to, kellermedia.com, kellermedia.com slash webinar, et cetera, and, and really get a hold of Wendy. Find out what she has to offer for you and browse around her website. I'm sure you'll find something that's going to be inspiring that you can aspire to. Thank you. That's really sweet. I look forward to helping anyone who comes to me to the best of our ability. There's a lot of free stuff on the website. I'm on LinkedIn. Please join me there. I'm always posting information and strategy and all that other stuff. This webinar will be there as soon as it's live. I want you to have the chance to really understand and learn so that when you approach an agent, myself or another agency, we only handle nonfiction, for instance, when you approach, you actually get the positive result and you don't get the negative feedback of no, 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 that so many authors complain about. If you're doing things right and your platform is growing, you absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, will build a successful business, will become a well-paid speaker, will get a book deal. You just kind of got to follow the path a little bit so that you can have what you most desire. Absolutely. So thank you, Wendy, for being on the Wealthy Wednesday show. This has been action-packed, power-packed, tipped-packed, and yeah. I am so grateful for you for being on here. Is there anything else that you'd like to leave the audience before we say our farewells? I think I would just like to say that a big part of success is showing up, right? Do it today, do it tomorrow, pay attention to if it's working, reward yourself for positive behavior, stop beating yourself up for what you think is negative behavior, and you'll get there. It's just a matter of continuing to turn that lock until the safe pops open. Exactly. Perfectly said. So I want to thank you for being on the Wealthy Wednesday show. And I want to thank my audience for being on the Wealthy Wednesday show. We have so many compliments and I've had so many people write into me and I'm so grateful that you are telling me you wanted to speak with people who were more publishers. You wanted to learn more about speaking. So I am giving you these incredible individuals that are giving you the tips and giving you the suggestions that can help you. Please continue to give comments. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you get a hold of me, lucymcmonicle.com, and let me know what did you like about this show. And also if there's anything else you'd like us to cover. So until next time, Abundant Blessings. Thank you for listening to the Wealthy Wednesday Show. This is your host, Lucy McMonagle. I am the mystic wealth creator, a mentor for conscious women entrepreneurs, helping them create more freedom in their business through conscious wealth creation. I would love to extend to you a free gift. And all you need to do is go to my website at lucymcmonocle.com that's l-u-c-i m-c-m-o-n-a-g-l-e dot com to get your free gift so until next time abundant blessings <laughs>